Every nurse and doctor in the world needs to be able to record blood pressures using manual devices, using the auscultatory method by listening with a stethoscope. And originally we used to use these Sphigman manometers. Sphigman was the name of the guy that uh, developed it. A manometer is a pressure gauge and this one uses millimetres of mercury in a column. This one's analogue and uses a dial. It's the same thing. And what they're both doing is we're going to wrap this cuff around the patient's arm and as we blow that cuff up and let it down the pressure in the cuff is going to be the same as the pressure that is recorded on that dial. That's how we know it works. And what we're listening for is, is sounds called Kortikov's sounds after Nikolai Kortikov, the well-known Russian surgeon who first published in 1905. And what we do is we put the cuff on and we pump it up above the systolic pressure. That is above the pressure at which the heart is contracting during systole, when the left ventricle is contracting. And as we let the pressure down, when there's just sufficient pressure for the blood to get past the cuff on the top of the arm, we can hear that in the brachial artery. Now, we used to think that the sounds were caused by the turbulence of the blood in the arterial vessel. But the physicists have now told us that that would generate lower frequency sounds than this. And the sounds that we're actually hearing are caused by resonances set up by the arterial wall itself. But it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. In practical terms, the sounds are the same thing. The sounds represent the same pressures. So when we start to let the pressure down, there's a point, you can hear some odd sounds when you're letting the pressure down. So suppose the blood pressure was um, 120 over 80. When you're letting the pressure down from say 160 or 180, you do get odd sounds. But when you get to 120, which is the blood pressure in this case, you start getting a regular sound. And those regular sounds are the pulse just coming through the, the cuff. And the systolic pressure, the first pressure, is when we hear the first sound. So that very first sound is usually fairly faint, but then it gets progressively louder. It gets progressively louder. Now the very first sound is the systolic blood pressure, the first pressure, in this case 120 then typically it gets progressively louder. There is a bit of variation in these sounds, but it will get progressively louder. Then you'll have one beat that you hear, which is the loudest one that you hear. Then after that, the beat will become muffled. And then after that, it will die away fairly soon after that. Usually, well, it can be a millimetre or two of mercury after the, uh, the muffled sound, or it can be as much as 10 millimetres of mercury after the muffled sound, but it will die away. And the last sound that you can hear with your ears is the diastolic pressure. Now, we used to teach that the first muffled sound was the diastolic pressure. We now know this does not represent accurately the physiological situation. So what used to be called the diastolic dilemma is now over. The very last sound that you can hear is the diastolic pressure. So typically we start off quiet. Very first sound, that's your systolic pressure. Then first muffled sound. And that very last faint sound you hear is the diastolic pressure. So let's see this done in practice now. Bill, you know we've been keeping an eye on your blood pressure lately. Yeah. I'd like to check it now. Is that okay with you? That's fine. Okay. So I'm going to put this cuff onto Bill's arm. Now we can see there's a line there that says artery. That's going to go over Bill's brachial artery. And I'm just going to palpate Bill's brachial artery now. Is that okay, Bill? Yeah. Just put your arm down there for me. Now, the brachial artery is medial. It's two-thirds of the way across to the inside. This is the medial. This is the lateral surface. And the brachial artery is just here. I can feel, his bra I can feel Bill's brachial artery pulsating there. Can you feel that, Bill? I'm pressing it. I press it quite hard. Can yeah. you feel me? Yeah. So I can feel the brachial pulse there quite nicely. 
And with a bit of practice, you get to know exactly where the brachial artery is, and it's very consistent between individuals usually. I'm just going to put this cuff on now, but you've had this done plenty of times, haven't you? Yep. And put that around there. That way. And it's nice and easy with these Velcro ones. I'm now going to connect up to the pressure gauge, the manometer, and as we see, that's calibrated in millimetres of mercury. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten that up like that and when I screw that that means I can start pumping up and you'll feel the pressure there Bill, do you feel that pressure going up? Yep. Yep. And then to let the pressure down I'm going to turn it that way. And again with a bit of practice you can control this really quite precisely. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to listen with a stethoscope and I'm going to listen with the diaphragm side which is that side. So just make sure I'm open to the diaphragm. So when it's, that's now open to the bell side, turn it that way. It's now open to the diaphragm side. So I'm going to put that over yours brachial artery, <clears throat> apply a little bit of pressure. Now I'm going to pump this up and I'm going to pump it up till I can't hear any pulses coming through Bill's brachial artery. So I hear no sounds. Now I'm going to gradually let it down, listening for the first sound. And there we have it. Now I've got Bill's blood pressure and we'll let you listen to that and see what you think it is.
Now the units of blood pressure are millimetres of mercury and this is because originally blood pressure was measured, measured in just that, millimetres of mercury. So in this old style Sphygman manometer blood pressure machine we've got a reservoir of mercury in there and when we pump the mercury up this reflects the pressure in the cuff around about Bill's arm. So we can see it exactly in millimetres of mercury. So again we'll pump up till we can't hear it and then we'll let it down and as we listen for the sounds we'll work out what Bill's blood pressure is. And this is actually the most accurate way to do it because the specific gravity and the density of mercury of course is never going to vary. So have a listen with, to Bill's blood pressure when we take it with mercury and see what you can hear in terms of the sounds. <laughs> 